Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, this midweek edition. How do you do? We are ready to rock and roll, and we're going to talk about how the Arizona real estate market and the national real estate market is not heading in the direction that the central bank would like to see. Hello, everybody. Good morning. And we have uh, Keenan. Hope your ski trip is good up there in Canada. Um, so yesterday, um, Jerome Powell was testifying in front of the Senate. That's always interesting to watch. And sometimes it's very painful to watch because the senators like to, before they ask a question, they ramble on with about a two minute speech because the cameras are on. I mean, they'll talk about anything and then go. So anyway, my question is, and it's like, could you just get to the question? And, uh, Who's our wonderful uh, senator out of uh, Massachusetts, uh, Elizabeth Warren? She was asking him questions. Every time he went to answer him, she goes, well, I'll tell you what the answer is. And she cut him off every time. It was so frustrating. Um, senator Warnock of Georgia was really the only one that spent some time talking about real estate and the effects of uh, real estate with the rate hikes. Good morning, YouTube. And he said... You know, when you look at the fact that interest rates have gone up, raising the payments, particularly for first-time home buyers and for middle-of-the-road home buyers, and the home, the price of homes is not coming down, you've actually made inflation work worse for housing. You've made it more unaffordable. And he said, "Isn't the cure worse than the disease right now?" And then he said, "Um." When I look at homes that where people have a 3% interest rate and now interest rates are at 7%, um, do you think these people are ever going to sell? And Jerome Powell said, and I quote, I would assume that none of them are moving. So he didn't really address the fact that affordability was really getting killed um, and, uh, in the real estate business. And uh, so he didn't go into a lot of details there. Now, he did say that the numbers are not going <clears throat> like they want them to and that they're going to have to apply more pressure than they thought they would. Now, the markets have taken that into consideration today. We're sitting here at 7.03, actually, 7.03. It's gone up like 0.04 unchanged from yesterday afternoon. So we'll see how the rest of the day goes. The market's been open about an hour. Um, so we've gone up and they, they're they anticipating that the announcement that comes out the Fed meeting on March 10th may be as high as 0.50 instead of 0.25. So they're pricing that in. Now, if they go up 0.50 on March 10th, rates may, may not move. They go up 0.25, they'll probably come down. Remember that the markets anticipate ahead. By the time the announcement comes, um, it's old news. So, and what the Fed is really, really in a quandary about is this here. This is called sticky price consumer price index, less food and energy. So why don't they count food and energy? And I'm going to go back to the Senate question here in a minute too, because they can't do anything for it. And we've got Edward here flying on Delta Airlines, free Wi-Fi. All right. I This... This show is now at 40,000 feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bet is somebody found disappointed in the Fed meeting was all the barbs each side threw at each other. It's just grandstanding. There's nothing accomplished with those things. But you can see here on this chart that we are not progressing like they want us to, especially when I move the chart. So let me squeeze this back out a little bit here. I My mouse got a little carried away. Um, they would like to see this come down. And it's just not. And my red marker is not working on this one. So the reason that they don't count food and energy is they can't do anything about it. The Fed can't change the price of fuel and they can't help lower the price of food. And lo and behold, one senator got on there and tried to grill him. And he said, um, talking about climate change policies, and he started grilling him on do some of these climate change policies, are they are they uh, adding to inflation? And do you think that we should have more 
domestic oil production so that we can help lower the price of fuel. And he snapped back at him and said, that's not my job. That's the job of Congress. That's the Treasury Department. That's not our job. So he, he hit him pretty hard. I thought that was kind of fascinating. But here's what's happening now. And this is why the central bank says, well, you know, it's not quite working it as fast as we thought it would. Now, when you look at the, the amount of uh, money that they're taking out M2 of the money circulation, that takes about 12 to 18 months to show up. So there is a concern that the moves they're making now won't show up until later. And by the time the, move, the moves uh, start showing some results that they're hoping for, it may be too late for them to keep the slide from continuing. And what we're seeing here is, look, mortgage demand rises in the latest week despite loans becoming more expensive. And uh, so and Keenan says, no broken bones, always a plus. Yes, I hear you there. Heading to Phoenix, cool. Um, you know, better. I think they're going to go up 50 points too. So mortgage rates sitting at the high sixes, low sevens, and yet we have higher mortgage applications. Here's the problem here with uh, uh, monthly average price sales per square foot. This is from the Conference Report. Now, the editorial here says, it's possible that you are skeptical when I claim that prices are heading higher. List prices have been moving up for several months, but sales prices, not so much. Until now, that is. Look at the daily chart below. Look at the sales prices per square foot. Little tiny dip here last week. We hit 264 in the middle of January, and now well behind us, we are threatening to breach the $274 level. We may hit some resistance at this level, but there is also positive news coming from the percentage of list department. Right now, homes are closing for an average of 97.2% of the list. This is well up from 96.5% we saw during January and the best reading since October. The Federal Reserve will likely not like these signs as they want prices to come down. This may result in interest rates moving higher again. This may suppress demand, but it may also make buyers think current rates are better than the future, justifying a purchase decision now rather than later. That could be a wise move if both prices and payments rise. And Tyler says, uh, stay at 2.5. Just him saying he might already crash. Just him saying he might already crash the market yesterday. It's pretty bad. I don't know what that stream element spot is there. Um, now, they said something right here that said that um, perhaps people are rushing to buy now for fear that rates are going to be higher down the road. Zillow came out with their forever, always track record of predictions. I say that tongue in cheek. And they actually came out and said that by 2027, in 2027, they expect prices to be up in the middle of the road pricing tier by 40%. So they're saying, despite everything that's going on right now, our predictors are saying that, you know, it might not be a bad time to buy because, you know, in five, four or five years, uh, we expect real estate prices to be higher. Now, you have to take that with a grain of salt because when has Zillow been spot on? Not very much. Here's the other thing. And Chairman Powell said yesterday that he said they're waiting for the new leases to come on board to see how much relief we're getting in rent prices. He anticipates rent prices will be lower as people sign new leases. And if and basically saying doesn't really expect them to be much lower, but he expects the rate of ascent, the inflation in rentals to be starting to subside. And we can see here in Phoenix, well, that has happened a little bit. We hit a peak of $1.40 per square foot, came down to 132, now at 134. So we're not seeing um, a whole lot of re relief in in rentals. And uh, Keenan here says, I wonder if the Fed's going to realize they don't have a handle on this unique inflation, the only tool they have to use. He did mention that they have a lot of tools that they're using, and he didn't really go into details. So they've got more than just raising things 0.25 and 0.50 there. You look at the amount of money, too, and the amount of percentage of how much they're pulling back 
Um, it's, it's enormous, but they, he didn't share that. And uh, good morning, Jason. Um, Tyler says Zillow can't predict six months out and they try for years. I know it's, it's funny to watch. Here is also our days of inventory. Have They've come down. You can see that they spiked way up when interest rates went from three to seven. And now we're down to 68 days of supply. You know, we always say that, you know, normal in real estate's about four to six months. Uh, but what's normal anymore? <laughs> Betty says, I didn't look at my portfolio yesterday. House price is still in the ludicrous zone in Sierra Vista area. Scratching my head, but they're selling. It, it is. I thought for sure you get up in the high sixes and boom, down goes Frazier. But we're not seeing it. Um, another thing I want to talk to you guys about today, I mentioned yesterday about the Bonanza House. House built by Lorne Green to look just like the Bonanza House in the movie. And I found out some interesting stuff and I actually went there yesterday. It's in East Mesa and I found it on the MLS. And I'm going to show that to you here. Um, this is the Bonanza house and I love the interior here. This is the old big stone fireplace that they had in the television series. And then they have, uh, um, they actually have cardboard cutouts of, uh, there's Haas and there's, uh, Joe and, uh, and then they have, see the staircase that goes up here. Well, in the television series, um, what's interesting is here's the history of this place. In the television series, they were going upstairs. But you'll notice this is a one-story house that he had built. So Lauren Green had this built in 1963. And he had the house built in 1963. And he said he wanted it to look like the home in the television show. But there never was a home in the television show. There were just studio sets. So when they were walking upstairs, they never really were going upstairs. Now, in the series, you had, uh, you know, um, Lauren Green, Cartwright, and three boys, and they were men. I don't Why they were all living together it never made any sense. Who was the mother? They all looked different. Did they have three different wives? Really a bizarre series. But uh, this home only has two bedrooms. So they don't say how many bedrooms are in the television home. But not only did he build um, this home in 1963, 475, take my money. Yeah, that's that's when it closed in 2018. Um, he developed the entire neighborhood. He developed the entire development. So he came in and put this house in, and then he built the neighborhood around it, and including uh, the golf course. And, well, no, I don't think he built the golf course. But they don't have tours there, but they kind of do. From what I've read, the golf course, you can go there, and you can have some meetings and events. And they will take you over to the back patio of this house so that you enter that way because they don't want a bunch of cars parking out front and disturbing the neighborhood. So they come in on the back patio and the back patio looks like yonder here. See if I can pull it up. My mouse has decided it wants to disappear here. So there it is. So there's your back patio. And then people can go in. And uh, um, yeah, Jackie, I thought this was fascinating. And it's a beautiful little neighborhood. And it's... Uh, just south, it's on Power Road, just off of Power Road, south of Broadway, between Broadway and uh, Southern. And so, as you can see by the map here, up Superstition Springs area. And so they developed that, and he would come over and stay there when he came from Southern California, where his permanent residence was. And then these other people bought it, and they they kind of had to restore it. And uh, so they're having, um, uh, like I say, tours from the golf course there, and and uh, I just thought that was kind of fun. I'd love to see the inside. I I love that kind of architecture. It's kind of like going up to Pine Top Sholo, looking at some of the homes that they have up there or Greer. Um, I'd love to have that kind of a house. So I'll go knock on the door and see what it is. I heard it was up for sale for 895000 at one point. But according to the tax records, um, it hasn't moved since 2018. So... I don't know. And I read an article that it was for sale for eight ninety five. dollars Maybe they tried and they failed. Another thing coming to Chandler here right now, there's a sporting goods retailer. Remember the Nordstrom's down in Chandler? Well, here's what it's going to look like. It's called Shields. They're going to hire 400 people. They have already posted their full-time positions already. The minimum wage that they see that we have there for this place is $17.50 an hour. So they've got all kinds of 
positions and it's on their on their website you can look up shields s-h-e-e-l-s and uh it's funny to see what a huge building that is it's going to have a ferris wheel inside of it um and their whole concept is um that uh that they're going to be very entertaining. I mean, they realize a lot of things they have in their store that you can buy online, but they want this to be a destination and an event. So it looks like it's going to be a really cool store and uh, I can't wait for it to open so I can drive down there and see it. A um, couple of things as well. I want to give a big shout out to Jackie here. Those of you know that we're all together on the show on Thursdays, we've got Pat, what my, what's my rate McMasters and the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby, and we will uh, be recording our show this afternoon to air tomorrow night. But we work as a as a team. If I'm out of town and I can't show a house, I call Jackie and Ruby, vice versa. And uh, just want to give her a shout out for for doing really a fantastic job with with two people that I was not able to help because I was going down to Mexico. And uh, um, it, Jackie, you just nailed it. Um, she got a, these good prices and. Uh, um, got great terms and didn't you were up against five people on one house. And I think it was another bid process in the second house. And uh, you worked your hiney off. So I want people to know that when I refer things out to people like Jackie, I do it because I know how good they are. So if I'm not around, you reach out to me and I can't uh, show you the house for various reasons. I'm either on a trip or something. Uh, rest assured that you're in good hands. So it's been fun to watch. So, um, I am not on tomorrow morning, but I'm going to be on tomorrow evening. And then we're going to do live with Pat. What's my rate McMasters on Friday and the Mick report until then I will see you then take care. Have a great middle of the week.